la langue française. J'adore. Today, I thought that I would talk a little bit about my journey with the French language and learning to speak French, which did not happen just as a result of my getting married, but has been a really a lifelong pursuit. So I thought I would share a little bit about that journey for those of you who are studying a language, whether it's French or another language. C'est parti! Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to my channel. My name is Karen. I am an entrepreneur, a designer, a writer, and a newlywed, newly living in France. I'm going to speak a little bit of French here and there. I'll just pepper in a little bit. Du coup, quand j'étais très jeune, uh, je pense que j'avais uh, 11 ans, 12 ans, je ne suis pas sûre, mais um, à l'école, on a dû choisir une langue étrangère à étudier. L'allemand, German, uh, le français, French, uh, le latin, Latin et l'espagnol, Spanish. Et pour moi, c'était juste euh, immédiat. J'ai choisi le français. C'était la langue pour moi. Je ne suis pas sûre pourquoi, mais je l'ai fait. I studied French in junior high and high school for six years, I believe. I went all the way to the end of the program in high school and I just absolutely loved it. I think I even won an award for like, you know, being a, a great foreign language student in my school. I was very proud of that. I could write pretty well. Uh, you know, I, my grammar was strong, but my speaking was, it just wasn't there. In school, even studying, even if you study a few hours a week in school, you don't necessarily have a chance to have like full conversations. You're more doing exercises and things like that. My family's not French, by the way. My my family now is, but my, my original family is not uh, French. And I didn't really have any French friends at the time, so I didn't have a lot of opportunity to really speak French. It was at a time before social media, so we didn't really have all of the opportunities for like meetup groups or online, you know, coaching or things like that at that time. It wasn't until a few years after high school that I went to Paris for the first time just for a few days. I remember that I was able to tell the taxi driver where we were going. I was able to say, you know, that we were coming from the States and, you know, just talk to the people in the hotel a little bit, you know, maybe order a coffee in a cafe. Really awkward how much I realized I didn't know how to do after six years of language study. I remember that my friend and I were in Paris and she was like, oh, you speak French. This is great. We've got to find a bus to get somewhere. And I remember I did not know how to say bus stop, arrêt de bus. I was like, how do I not know how to say bus stop after six years of study, you know? So aside from just a little trip here and there to Paris at, at that time, I had no real opportunity to speak French. So I really let it go. And I honestly, I felt like I had pretty much lost it all at, at one point. And then it was, gosh, it must have been seven or eight years ago. I was here alone in Paris, just taking a vacation by myself. I was only here for less than a week. And I just remember realizing, I mean, this was you know, 20 years after <laughs> having studied or more, I can't, <laughs> let's not add that up right now. That's, but I remember thinking, oh, wow, I, I, I can pick up a little bit on a few things that people are saying, but I, aside from being able to say, oh, here's my passport or where's the toilet. I really just, je pouvais pas parler, pas vraiment. I remember saying to myself, you know what? It's great that you remember a little bit and that you can pick up a little bit. And you know, Karen, it was always your dream. It was your dream as a young person to really be fluent in another language and to be able to speak French properly. And I said, you know what, maybe this is the moment where I pick up my studies again. C'est exactement ce que j'ai fait. I restarted my, my classes. I really like learning in a small group or one-on-one. -on -one. And I know that one-on-one -on -one teaching is not you know available to everyone. I chose to prioritize it for myself because it was sort of my one hobby that had any cost associated with it. I like to run, but that doesn't really cost anything. I let myself spend a little bit of money on getting a getting a teacher. And I also took small classes in several places. In New York, I studied at l'Alliance Française, which is really like the, you know, French school. They also have um, cultural events and lots of French celebrities and speakers coming there. They've got a big auditorium in Manhattan. And then I also studied in France, in Lyon, uh, at a school called Lyon Bleu which was great. I did uh, a month or two of study there. Funny story, at Lyon Bleu, 
I remember I was in a, a high level French class, mostly with a bunch of young people who were like getting ready to go to university from all over the world. One day I remember I was complaining after class about something. I cannot even remember what I was complaining about, but I was kind of giving the teacher a hard time about something. And she was like, Karen, arrête. Qu'est-ce que tu dis? And I was like, what? And she was like, you are mispronouncing every word that you're saying. And now, mind you, this is after, who would say, a good year of having re, you know, restarted my studies and really trying to like get myself together. And she was like, you have a private lesson tomorrow with me. I am going to teach you how to pronounce French. And I was like, what is this lady going to teach me? What is she talking about? And you know what? She blew my mind. I realized that there were some very simple words that I didn't know how to pronounce. I didn't know the difference between un, un, and oh and now i just think how did i not know the difference between that but she actually had uh, pictures of the way the mouth is formed to pronounce the voyelle nasale the nasal vowels in in french which is one of the most important and most difficult things for us as uh, english speakers i couldn't believe it and so i started notating every word that i was saying with the like i would make a little little dot for when I had to say mm, and I would make a big open mouth when I had to say uh, and I would make an um, oval shape um, when I had to say uh. gradually over time I, I, I got better and I credit her with like when I was in the middle of insulting her she took it as a teaching moment and she showed me how to pronounce those vowels and it, it changed my life in French it made me understandable I had also been taking courses at the Sorbonne I forget the exact name of the school it's their foreign language school in Paris and I've been taking some summer courses there. I progressed through a few different levels, had made it to the C1 level, which is the highest level that they um, offer. Feeling really, really good about myself. I um, also had been working with a teacher who specialized in one of the particular diploma exams that is offered. Um, there are, are different ones. There's the DELF. Um, there's the DELF. I decided to go for the DELF say un, c1 that's sort of like it's not the highest level is c2 but c2 is really for people who are going to be like doctors in france or have a technical job in in france and at the time i that i was getting the diploma i was like i probably won't ever be doing that so i'm just gonna i'm gonna do the c1 i prepared myself for that exam over the course of it's like four or five months just preparing for that exam on a travailler ensemble sur skype elle m'a fait faire cet examen douze fois. Um, she would give me uh, a subject and I would have to write a treatment, an argument. I would have to present an oral presentation about something and uh, it was just horrible. She was wonderful, by the way. It's not her. She was not horrible. She was the best of the best. I just remember each time I would think, okay, I'm doing great. You know, I'm, I feel stronger. I feel better. And she was giving me different subjects. I was getting, I thought, more comfortable with it. And then I remember, first of all, the papers that I would get back from her, or even at the Sorbonne, like writing, just la cata, <laughs> just horripilant. Je me demandais, mais Karen, comment ça, après tout ça, après tout l'effort que j'ai fait, je peux même pas communiquer? It was really crazy. I, I just was asking myself after everything I've done, how am I in this position? But you know what? I, I just kept going. I remember the week before taking my DELF exam, my private teacher, she gave me one last exam. I believe there were four different parts of the exam, you know, where you have to demonstrate your oral comprehension, oral expression, written comprehension, and written expression. And it lasts over the course of two days. And I remember in the oral presentation, that was the one that I was like most nervous about. I had to go in front of two examinateurs at the Sorbonne. And I was, um, just you know terrified of that i asked her well what score would you have given me out of 25 thinking like okay it's one week away i was already in paris like preparing to take this this test and it just been my birthday and i was like on a high this was like lifelong dream is about to be achieved and i said out of 25 points how many would you give me and she said hmm, like 13 yeah 13 sur 20, 25. 13 out of 25 to someone who was, you know, somewhat of a good student in school and liked to get my A's. I was like, that's just unacceptable. And she's like, no, ça passe. Psychologically, I never should have asked her that question because it just like, it got me really nervous and upset. About a week later, um, or maybe it was that same week, I took my exam, took my oral exam. So I had done the oral part of this exam, like in tests exams, 12 times with 12 different subjects. She's like, I'm going to give you every subject. So Chances are you're gonna know one of these subjects when they give it to you. Well, c'était pas le cas, pas du tout. Uh, en fait, um, le sujet que qu'ils m'ont donné, c'était les médecines alternatives. I don't 
know any of the vocabulary for alternative medicine in French. Fantastic. Luckily, they did let us um, use a French to French dictionary and we had one hour to prepare. Uh, je vais faire de mon mieux. I guess it was about three days later or a week later, we got our results. And I remember coming in for some reason, they didn't email us the results. We had to go in and look on the, the board. And so I went in, I looked on the board and it was like a white piece of paper and there was a list and I'm looking down, you know, my last name begins with a B. So I'm looking down the list. I'm looking down the list. My name's not there. No, you've got to be kidding me. C'est pas vrai. C'est pas possible. Then I realized that the list didn't go alphabetically like this. It went like this, like left to right. The names were alphabetized and my name was on the right column. Je l'ai. Je l'ai. That's what you say when you pass an exam. J'étais sur un petit nuage. That's kind of the same expression as I was uh, on cloud nine. It was, c'était mon rêve, it was my dream. What did I do? I just literally like flitted and floated out of the, the secretary's office and the Sorbonne. And I was like, I'm taking myself out for a cheeseburger. I'm gonna get a glass of wine. And I'm, I, you know, I have gonna have a piece of paper from the French government that says, Karen is fluent in French. So I go to this cute little restaurant that I always loved sitting there like just a little scarf around my neck like ah, je parle français oui je parle couramment français and this guy in who had been hanging around at the bar il m'a approché il a commencé à me parler and he said something that i could not understand i don't know to this day one word of what this man said to me and if you could have seen how my ego and my heart and everything just sunk to the bottom of the ocean when I had been on this cloud nine. That day was like the epitome of high and low because what did I realize? Something that a lot of people who spent a lot of time studying a language realize is that I had the diploma now. I'm official, you know, uh, there's a lot of things I can do with that diploma and I was very proud of it. And I did learn a whole lot about the French language. And by the way, um, what I didn't tell you is on my oral exam, the one where my teacher said she would give me a 13 out of 25, well, I got a 23 out of 25. Thank you very much. It didn't matter. Even though I had a 23 out of 25 in my academic diploma exam, I couldn't talk to this mech dans un bar, okay? And it's not that I even wanted to talk to him. I didn't, he wasn't cute. I suddenly realized I effing don't know how to speak French. I know how to speak school French, elegant French, where you say things like, mais oui, um, c'est bien entendu, merci, um, mais je suis d'accord avec vous. You know, you're speaking in a formal way, you're, you're arguing something, but you're not actually just communicating with regular people on the street. And so this guy was a very casual guy. He was probably kind of tipsy at the time. Didn't understand him. I was so dejected. He went away shortly because he realized I couldn't even process what he was saying. I felt like an absolute piece of crap. I was just like, je suis nul. Je suis Zidiot. I didn't let it get me down. I just immediately called my professor, Sophie, and I told her, okay, je l'ai. Okay, she was very happy to hear that I got my diploma. And now, j'aimerais bien travailler sur le vrai français, sur la langue française quotidienne. And so we agreed that we would start working on real French. I don't want to call it street French because there are different, you know, levels of familiarity. I wanted to speak, a, you know, a French that was appropriate to me. So, you know, if you're a young student and you want to be more in with the slang and the verlan and lago and all of that, that's just great. It's fantastic. I do like to learn the slang in the language so that I can watch movies and I know what it means when they're like, on se casse. Like, you know, <laughs> for me, I just wanted to be able to communicate clearly in a way that was appropriate to my age and to my own personality. So we started working on that and she helped me enormously. I took my diploma in 2017. I really just stopped working with her. I believe it was in 20, end of 2021 or beginning of 2022 because she changed her job. I met my husband in 2021. I gained a lot of confidence in the interactions that I had with my husband in the very beginning because it was one of the first times where I got to actually really have in-depth conversations about normal things, about life, about what's important, about my work with another person, just like one-on-one. -on -one. You don't always have those opportunities. And he was so incredibly kind and generous to me, respectful of my French, of the effort that I had put in and, um, you know, complimentary and just so sweet and kind that I didn't realize until our third date that he speaks perfect. And I mean, when I say perfect, I mean, 
English. I was like so caught up in just like trying to do everything in French, which by the way, I think is a very good idea. If you can force yourself into uncomfortable situations, like going on a date with someone and doing it in French, even texting them in French, everything. But I'm so happy that we had our first interactions in French because I have heard from other people who are married to or who are dating a French partner or a partner in a different language that whatever language you meet in, sometimes that can take precedence over, you know, switching to another language. So I'm glad we started in French and now we regularly speak Franklish, you know, where if I don't know a word, I'll just say it in English and just keep going on with my French sentence or we'll just flip back and forth. Sometimes he'll speak to me in English, I'll speak back to him in French. But what I was going to say about my teacher as well, Sophie, you know, a great teacher will, will help you with anything that you really need to learn. And at one point when I was starting to go out with my husband, I realized okay, I've never like dated anyone in French. I don't know how to properly say things like you're handsome or I like you versus I love you. It's, you know, the verb aimer can mean I like it or I love it. I had to ask her about that and so that I wouldn't screw up and I had I needed to know a few little like romantic terms if you know what I mean. And she helped me with everything just completely unselfconsciously. She's like tell me what you'd like to know how to say and we'll just go through it and she gave me lots of cute little expressions to use and and now where I am in my language journey is I'm here. I'm living in France. I've started a French company. I can say that I honestly live every day in French, although I do have clients in the US that I speak to in English, but I try as much as possible to speak French in everything I do and everywhere I go. I'm in the process of getting my French driver's license. So I have been in the car for hours and hours with driving instructors, 100% in French. And if you want to know more about my driving, um, you can watch that video. There's a couple of them because it didn't go so well. I'm on a different part of my journey where I'm really immersed in the language in a way. I, I live here. I'm a resident. I go to the dry cleaner. I go to the market, have to go to the doctor and speak to the doctor. My doctor does not really speak English. When you make an effort to speak another language, people really respect you for that and they appreciate it a lot, especially if they're not as good in your language as you are in theirs. I have a different experience in France because of the fact that I have a better level of French. You know, but I worked hard for it. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Also is just don't get discouraged. Keep it up. Try to throw yourself into an uncomfortable situation. Like for me, talking on the phone in French was always very, very difficult. And just, you know, making sure that you understand it. Like saying your phone number in French is completely different than the way we say our phone numbers in the States. Like, you know, we would say like each number, 646, blah, blah, blah. In France, they say them in pairs of numbers and I had to learn how to do that. All of these little things are so beautiful and there's always progress and there's always new things to to learn and to take in about the culture and the language. And I am loving every minute of continuing this journey and I know that I'll be making mistakes. That's another thing is even though I have a level of fluency, I make mistakes all the time and I always will. I mean, I'll get better uh, at certain things and I work to improve, but there will always be mistakes. I will always have an accent you don't have to not have an accent. Having an accent is cute and charming. And sometimes when I speak French, people just smile. Like they just smile because they know that I'm American and they hear my accent and they like it, you know, in some way. So I would just encourage you to keep going. Bon courage, bonne continuation. J'espère que, que vous avez euh, aimé ce, cette vidéo. J'espère que, que vous l'avez trouvé utile. If you have questions, about learning French or about learning French in France or anything like that, drop me a comment and I'll try to uh, try to help you. Alors, merci de m'avoir rejoint. À bientôt. Bonne journée. Au revoir. <laughs>